WCCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, 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 no. It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Not alongside Lucas DeSangro, but alongside a couple, uh, quite a few other folks here. We have a full studio in here. I'm your host, Ferran Derry, and... Well, we're going to get right into our guests who are uh, here with us for the duration. And uh, one of them would be the general manager of Atlantic Pro Wrestling, which is uh, making its way here to the area, uh, none other than Sir Style. Go ahead and hop on the mic here. I was going to say, you're no stranger to the microphone. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we're coming here October 15th, Fairless Hills, the Fraternal Order of Eagles, and uh, we're looking forward to our debut. And uh, I'm, I'm sitting right here with uh, a guy who's going to be defending the uh, Indy Roundup Championship that night. It's a heavyweight championship. It's a prestigious belt. It's been... Uh, it's been defended throughout several promotions and in several states, so we're proud to have it come here to Pennsylvania. That's something that's interesting in our business these days, but let's introduce the man himself, Grey Wolf. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Uh, it certainly is a pleasure. I've, uh, we, I've certainly uh, seen you here, there, and everywhere uh, in numerous, uh, numerous promotions, numerous battles, including, of course, the MFPW, where uh, a lot of, of our broadcasts are from. And um, I've got my shirt on today in Monster Factory. Yes, uh, he is wearing the I'm a Monster Factory guy, and it's a, uh, it, given the muscle that is on Grey Wolf, it is a lot larger size than I would wear, that's for sure. What, I was going to say, should I even ask what size? Uh, how many X's are before it? No. <laughs> <laughs> to be personal, it's a 2X. It's oh, okay. Uh, my, my ultimate goal is if I can, if I can fill out the 3X and still have abs, I'll, I'll be happy. I'd be lucky if I could fill out the large that I'm wearing and have abs. I mean, I have not but it's behind about 30 pounds of fat, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the show coming up here, it is on October 15th. That's uh, a few weeks from now. Um, trying to do the math in my head real quick here. That would be five weeks from today, I believe. Yeah, it's about five weeks away. It's five weeks' worth of preparation I have for this filthy vampire I have to face in the main event. What, what a main event. Oh, my goodness. Kindred, and the new age Dracula. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, the, uh, give us a little bit more detail about this, uh, this, this vampire. So, yeah, and this is our main event for tonight. Kindred, the New Age Dracula. Um, this guy is, is scary. Like, you, like we said, this guy is out of the Monster Factory, and Kindred is, I refer to him, he kind of is a Monster Factory. I, I, you know, every time I see him, he has more brainwashed freaks following him around. And, and uh, you know, personally, I, I don't like the guy. He's put me through a table. He's ra ran my head into a cage. So I'm looking forward to this battle because not only is this a battle of two huge monsters, literally, but uh, it's we're going to make it uh, false count anywhere. So uh, it's, it's oh, going wow. to be awesome. And, yes, we have extra security. Well, you often speculate, you know, uh, uh, is this a real vampire? You know, you, you don't know because he lives the lifestyle and you, you, you sort of, you don't know if the fangs are really, you don't know if he really is drinking blood, but you know, his personality is so ominous and he does, every time I see him, he has more people sort of following him around. So it's sort of almost a little bit of a cult he has, a little bit of a cult following that he literally has people following him all over the place. And you really wonder, is this, is he for real? And, you know, from everything I've seen, you, you, it's a matter of conjecture. You really don't know. Um, but I'm prepared for anything in, in its fullest. And, you know, he is quite a monster of a man. He's a big man. I've seen him take moves and take punishment that no mortal man should really be able to endure. So this is something I'm preparing for myself. Well, I, I agree 100 percent. Sorry. No. I agree 100 percent. Like, I, I can't figure this guy out. Is he for real? He is scary. I'll tell you that. I was going to say, to, to say the least, though, uh, to say that you are a, a, a normal or ordinary man would be, uh, yeah, would be far from the truth, though, Grey Wolf. Well, I mean, that's why we're built in the main event, I believe. I mean, if you want to destroy a monster, you have to get one to destroy one. 
I, I, Battle of Monsters, <laughs> Falls Count Anywhere? I mean, if there's anyone prepared, I, I fight Fulton... You know, all sorts of combatants of all sorts of states, you know, throughout the country. And I'll take on any adversary, I'll take on any foe, and I'm prepared, I think, more than any man to deal with this vampire. And I have a couple of surprises in store for him. You know, do you want to defeat a monster? Do you want to defeat a vampire? You bring a warrior. And that's exactly what I'm bringing. Hmm, bringing a warrior. And that's what we're doing. We're bringing a warrior versus the New Age Dracula, the Vampire Kindred, Falls Count Anywhere for the Indy Roundup Heavyweight Championship. As the general manager of Atlantic Pro Wrestling, I'm proud to be presenting this match to my hometown. And as I say, the, the belt, which is actually sitting here on the uh, the, the radio podium here, uh, it takes up a, a good chunk of it, too. It's a, a certainly by no means a small belt, but... Uh, more than understandable, considering it is no small championship, the Indy Roundup Championship. Um, I just want to say I'm very, very proud to hold it. If you're not familiar with Indy Roundup, it was a, started as a group, as a fan group, who would travel from promotion to promotion. Um, Tom Lyons um, was the head of and founder of uh, Indy Roundup. So, Tom, if you're listening, hello. It's great to... Uh, you know, be representing Indy Roundup um, with this great championship. And they, in the belt, like the group itself, it now travels from promotion to promotion. So it's an interpromotional uh, championship that's been defended from state to state. Um, re recently, we've, I've defended it in, uh, well, I won it in West Virginia. Um, on my against, birthday, On your 25th? birthday, yes, and against the German menace Craig Stagg. We had a battle for the Indy Roundup champ vacant Indy Roundup championship. It was my second time holding the belt. The first time I had to vacate it because of an injury. Um, so this is my—I never lost the belt. So this is my second time holding it. I had to win it again. Then we defi defended, defended it in West Virginia. I defended it in Delaware. Now I'm going to be defending it in Fairless Hills against uh, the Vampire Kindred. It's certainly well traveled and something that you don't really see an in, in interpromotional belt. I mean, it's certain, something uh, I think unprecedented, at least. Uh, I can't recall of any other uh, instances where something as like I, that's As happened. I mentioned earlier, we all know that's something that you just don't see very often in this business. So, again, yeah, Tom Lyons, if you're listening, thank you uh, for uh, having the Indy Roundup Heavyweight Championship uh, right here in Pennsylvania as, our, uh, as we come to Fairless Hills on October 15th. Now, for a little bit more information on the, uh, on the uh, location as far as the address and everything, it's going to be at the Fraternal Order of Eagles, uh, 920 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. Uh, a very nice facility. I've uh, attended an event or two there. I uh, actually did ring announcing for an event way uh, back in the distant past when dinosaurs roamed the earth. At least it feels that way. And uh, also, uh, uh, I see here on the bottom that uh, donations will go to... Uh, uh, the family of Peter Neely, whom uh, recently passed from leukemia? Correct, yeah. Um, my cousin's husband. Um, so he um, was battling leukemia for two years, and to be clear, his leukemia was in remission. He died from pneumonia. Um, of course, um, you know, he, he, he went through a lot. So, yeah, his uh, wife and three kids will be in attendance, and this is in honor of benefit in the, of them. Oh, very good. So it's it's going to a uh, to a great cause to help out a uh, a family that uh, suffered an unfortunate loss. Um, I was going to say Peter. Uh, I was going to say wasn't. Uh, I think he was only uh, in his early forty one. Forty right? years old. Yeah, he was 40, about to turn okay. forty one. Yeah. Okay. I tried tried to do a little bit of research no, that's pretty on that. Good, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, so we're proud to be able to, to do that with Atlantic Pro Wrestling's debut. And, and that's why I'm, you know, this is my hometown. I'm proud to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, we got an excellent card lined up to go before the main event that we'll talk about later. Uh, definitely. Now, uh, talk about some of the other matches that are uh, going to be on the card, uh, Sir Style. Okay. So, uh, you know, as Grey Wolf mentioned, um, one of his former opponents, uh, Craig Stagg, and he will actually be uh, in tag team action with, um, uh, you know, an independent superstar in his own right, Andrew Anderson. Uh, and they're going to take on Riot City. Um, so we are going to see something that's very interesting, and I think you'll find this interesting. Talk about a collision of styles there. So we're going to have Rock and Rebel return with the Rebels Army <laughs> to this area. And, oh, wow. Uh, anyone who's ever seen a show in this area uh, knows knows what that's all about. So to be quite honest, I'm not quite sure yet what his intentions are in coming back to this area in Atlantic Pro Wrestling, but I know it's going to be interesting. So Most certainly. So they're going to take on uh, a couple of guys, La Parca USA, a WCW original, and uh, the Meringue Warrior. The Meringue Warrior. So, 
you know, I'll, again, I don't, I don't know what Rebels' intentions are with reforming and rebooting the Rebels' army and joining up with Sean Carr, but that's something that's going to be very, very yeah, that's, interesting. That's something yeah. that really intrigues me on a personal level, being, you know, Rock and Rebel having been a mentor of mine. Or he still is a mentor and very good friend of mine, and also uh, and mine Sean too. Carr, um, and another one of the mm-hmm. most astounding up-and-coming athletes. If you've never seen Sean Carr wrestle, um, watch him wrestle because you'll, you'll be in for a treat. You know, he's another good personal friend of mine. And just to see that they have two very conflicting styles and to see you know, Rock and Rebel really taking Sean Carr into his wing. Maybe it's going to give Sean Carr that extra mean edge that he that he could possibly use because Rebel's known for really having that uh, that harsh edge and you know taking it to everyone that he's in the ring with. And maybe that's what Sean Carr needs to really put him over the top and really bring some brutality to his arsenal. So that's that's really intrigues me. On a I can't wait because I just I know I know Rock and Rebel. You know, ECW original. He takes you know this area personal to him because he's from not far from here. And I know he's coming with a purpose. I just don't know what it is yet. So. Yeah, well, we will see. Uh, we got another blockbuster match that is signed up. Uh, a monster of a man. I don't know if you've never seen him. You should look him up. His, his name is Sinister X. And there's no other way to describe him other than he's a beast. Uh, so he's going to take on uh, a guy who, to me, is a role model when it comes to the kids. Uh, he's a ring technician. And, you know, he's, he's just... He's just everything you think about when you think of the entertainment and pro wrestler, and that's the funky white boy. Uh, I guarantee, parents, your children will leave the building talking about the funky white boy and th- and this matchup, because this is a huge matchup. These two guys are amazing. I know they're going to leave everything out there. In fact, my two boys are right here, and they've been part of what I call the funky train, which is when the funky white boy gets some kids together and makes them part of his entrance, makes them their ma- his manager for just a few minutes and you want to see the looks on kids faces when they leave guys come here for a minute here we'll get him yeah well, we got another mic uh here, here. we'll go ahead and here, one second break. you guys have been part of the funky train what did you think did you have fun doing that i had very very much fun <laughs> what did you think brad dennis i thought it was pretty cool yeah and that there's no other wrestler that can bring in an entrance with kids yeah or so adults. so would you guys do it again in fairless hills if he asked you Yes. Cool, cool. All right, guys, thanks. Those, in those stereo as well. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm amazed that you were able to pry them from their electronic devices to come on over <laughs> here to these electronic devices. <laughs> they, they were ready. They were waiting for They could. They were hoping, yeah. It's like, they were yeah, I talked on the dream. radio. They left, <laughs> when they left the house this morning, they, they thought they were going to stay with their grandma, and I said, why don't you come with me? They, they couldn't have been more excited. So thank you for having them here in studio. Oh, no problem. I, it, I'm very interactive in that regard. I mean, uh, that's why we, you know, we open the phone lines up and... Uh, it, uh, people can certainly do so at uh, 215-949-3232 or toll-free at uh, 888-922-2149. And uh, yeah, anything you want to, uh, to, yeah, to bring up and ask, we, we'll, we'll get into the, uh, the usual thoroughfare of, uh, of news, notes, and other things to talk about. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, well, I'll get into that in just a second before our first time out. But uh, yeah, you were saying, Sir Style? Oh, definitely. Uh, there's just one other uh, title match at night that I wanted to talk about, and this is going to be the first ever uh, USW heavyweight title match. So uh, the winner is going to be the inaugural champion, and this isn't uh, this is this isn't just a, this is a battle of pride, not just for championship, because we have a guy who's done it all in the United States. It's a second generation superstar, Brian Hardy. Uh, he's made a checklist. He's marked it all. Off and, and now he wants to get this this USW heavyweight title, but it won't be easy. He's taking on somebody who uh, is going to want it too, the Tokyo Monster Kahangas. And so this is this is international. We all know there's a rivalry of the two styles of the American and the Japanese mm. wrestlers, and and uh, I can't wait to see this myself. Rivalry among some fans too, but that's yeah, all another of course, story. <laughs> of course. But uh, it's just interesting that I'm proud to be able to have signed this match because we will crown the first ever USW heavyweight champion. Certainly should be a lot of fun coming up five weeks from tonight, Saturday, August, or August. We're in August, or we were in August. I'm, I've been flip-flopping August and October all last month and probably will be doing it all throughout the dawn of time. I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe I subliminally, it feels like August out there, so I guess that's why I'm uh, thinking about it. A rather hot one here today. Saturday, October 15th. Uh, and that will be uh, Atlantic Pro Wrestling at the Fraternal Order of Eagles, 920 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. Uh, Gray Wolf, uh, I was going to say, it, if I were a betting man, I'd uh, de- definitely be uh, putting the house, the car, and everything else on you on that one. Well, I'm certainly going to bring all I have. And, you know, this is very, this is very personal between me and Kindred, and, uh, Kindred and myself. Um, we've known each other for a very long time. 
and needless to say, we've never liked each other very much. I have the utmost respect for the man. I've seen what he can do. I respect him as an individual, both inside and outside of the ring. Um, but him being a vampire and me being, you know, the, he's, as he says, of the wolven kind, you know, there's just a natural enmity uh, between us. And with as much as we, and I'm sure he respects me just as much as I respect him. And honestly, after I get on destroying him, I'm probably going to miss him quite a bit um, with what <laughs> I have planned and have in mind for him. But um, this, has been, this has been a feud that's been building up for quite some time. He, for some reason, can't keep his mouth shut whenever it comes to me. And I guess it's just my natural inclination of me being a filthy, dirty, miserable vampire that he is. I just can't keep my mouth shut uh, when it comes to him. And it's sort of been building up. And he's brought us, in, brought us on a bad witness to this. And the last time we were, we were actually down in Delaware at Rampage Pro Wrestling, we happened to be in the same locker room. And somebody had to get a picture with us. We just stared each other down. There was almost a match in the locker room between us because we just uh, finally encountering one another again after all that animosity building up between us. It, it was and amazing. It was, Everyone you know, else in the locker, the locker room went silent. And people ended up stepping between us just to get us apart just so things didn't happen right then and there. Um, so this is a very, very personal war. We have fought each other before in the ring. Um, I wrestled him once. He has a victory. O you know, he has a victory over me. I have a victory over him. Um, but there was no build up to it. This is just you know small shows here and there um, that w that we had wrestled each other. Um, so this will be this will be the big culmination of everything that's you know, we've been following each other for years, wanting to get at each other's throats, and this is going to be the big culmination of. Uh, the wolf against the vampire, and I'm bringing all I have. I have a little surprise I'm going to be working on um, for him. I'm sure he has some in store for me, but I'm prepared for whatever him and his whole little army of vampires. Uh, or what do you even call that? Is it even a group? Is it uh, another brood? I don't know what to even call them. Um, I, sort of I, brainwashed misfits, uh, freaks. Minions, I, I don't uh, know. Minions, uh, disciples. Uh, like you said, I haven't quite figured out really what's going on there, so it's still a little terrifying. But um, but uh, you, you know, you heard him. This has been building up for years. It's personal at this point, and this time they, they're settling the score, and it's for the Indy Roundup Heavyweight Championship. And as the general manager of Atlantic Pro Wrestling, I couldn't have been prouder to be having this match right here in Fairless Hills on October 15th. Certainly looking forward to it. We're talking with uh, Sir Style, the general manager of Atlantic Pro Wrestling, and the Indy Roundup Heavyweight Champion, uh, Grey Wolf, the last warrior Grey Wolf uh, here in studio. Going to take care of a timeout. Before we do so, though, got to let you know about a couple of appearances coming up for George's Cards and Collectibles. And if you happen to be over in Ben Salem right now, you got about mm, seven and a half minutes. You'll catch former WWE superstar and leader of the Exotic Express, Adam Rose, at the uh, Nishamani Mall location. Uh, that's right, going on until 1230 today. Also on Friday, September 23rd, former WCW diva and macho man Randy Savage Valet, Gorgeous George, will appear at the Nishamani Mall location. And football fans appearing that same night from 7 to 8 p.m., Philadelphia running back and kick returner Kenyon Barner. So a lot of great stuff going on there. George's Cards and Collectibles has been the leading collectible store in the tri-state area for over 20 years. They have three locations, including their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, in the Willow Grove Park Mall, and in the Neshaminy Mall in the movie theater wing. Get the latest info on George's Cards and Collectibles at their website, georgescollectibles.com, as well as through George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. We'll be back to chat a little bit more with our in-studio guests here, plus a little look at the news and notes, a preview of the WWE Backlash pay-per-view coming up tomorrow. And we might even talk a little bit about that, uh, that CM Punk guy who's doing some uh, UFC fighting tonight, the... 20-month wait finally coming to an end as far as his debut. All that and more here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Hello, I'm Dr. Lauren Hughes. As a physician, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of drug abuse on patients and families. Pennsylvania's new prescription drug monitoring program is a valuable tool for combating the opioid abuse crisis. Medical professionals can use it to identify those individuals struggling with addiction and help them get treatment. All licensed medical professionals should register today at doh.pa.gov slash pdmp. Sponsored by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Tom Wolf, Governor. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management.
Hi, I'm Henry Carpenter, a certified elder law attorney with a special message for people who are caring for an elderly or seriously ill parent. I know it can be difficult to talk about finances and long-term care planning with your parents, but it's important to sit down together to talk about their concerns before your family is in the middle of a medical crisis. One helpful way to get the conversation started is to pass along a magazine or a newspaper article that discusses finances for the elderly. You also might want to get some advice from a certified elder law attorney. We can help you and your family understand the different options available to them. I'm here to answer your questions on WBCB Tuesday mornings on Senior Legal Strategies or in my office at 215-493-0727. That's 215-493-0727. Or check us out on the web at www.buckscountyelderlaw.com. Sam's oh, got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have to I didn't him. give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking gay thing. <laughs> Breaking cape. I'm going to break <laughs> something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we right. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here. Well, solo as far as hosting, but uh, certainly no uh, no shortage of guests here in the studio. Uh, as we have the Last Warrior, Grey Wolf, the Indy Roundup heavyweight champion, uh, we'll be defending that coming up on October fifteenth at uh, for Atlantic Pro Wrestling at the Fraternal Order of Eagles on nine twenty Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. Uh, just a stone's throw practically from the uh, from the station here. Well, maybe if Grey Wolf threw it. If I threw it, maybe it would get about as far as the edge of Magnolia Hill. But that notwithstanding, we also have the general manager of Atlantic Pro Wrestling, Sir Style, here, as well as uh, a, a couple of the... Yeah, uh, yeah we got Little Style and we got Samoan Style here. <laughs> little Style and Samoan Style, okay. And uh, yeah, we're, we're getting into all different kinds of things here. Lucas, conspicuous by his absence, my, uh, my co-host... Uh, well, I was gonna say, Gray Wolf, you're very familiar with uh, with Lucas. I know very from uh, with, uh, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, we didn't Lucas, want you to be alone. I'm ashamed of you not being here. You have no excuse. Well, his um, no excuse. Nope. Um, that, don't say it. No excuse. Uh, employment's not, a, not Lucas. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> I'm trying to go to bat for you here, but uh, on the same token, uh, with somebody like Grey Wolf, I'm not going to get on his bad side. No, I, <laughs> I know better than that. <laughs> Maybe he'll call in. <laughs> yes, let's have him a call. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Lucas, call in if you hear me. <laughs> I was gonna say if he's got. Uh, I would imagine that if, since he's uh, rushing over here from uh, from work, which finished about a half hour ago, that uh, he should be listening in. And if he isn't, then he may have uh, both of us to deal with. <laughs> I just want to say on the on the uh, Lucas, I'm very proud of what you're doing. Keep do keep it up and keep up the hard work. He's going to want me to make that a drop somewhere down the line, I'm sure. Uh, I've got so many sounders of the silly things that he's said over the, uh, the last three-plus years that he's been on the show. It's, uh, it's been fun kind of uh, watching him grow and listening to him grow. Uh, uh, I mean, from starting off as a 15-year-old uh, a, a punk to now, uh, now an 18-year-old uh, wrestler in training. It's, uh, yeah, as, as much as I uh, Mahoney bust on him to keep it clean for the radio... Um, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of him as well, absolutely. So hopefully he'll get here soon and uh, avoid more trouble. Uh, that being said, let me, uh, let's me let get into a little bit of news and notes. Also, we've got uh, Ed from Northeast Philly. We'll get to him in just a moment on the uh, on the phone lines here. Take a look at the, uh, the local scene. Coming up in the next segment, we'll have uh, the predictions starting to go wrong for the, uh, the Backlash pay-per-view tomorrow. Uh, a couple little bits, uh, tidbits of news you can certainly, guys can certainly chime in on as well, uh, including... WWE announcing uh, that the company and Alberto Del Rio mutually agreeing upon the terms of his release. That was announced yesterday, and uh, he was not wished the best in his future endeavors. Um, considering that uh, Del Rio was uh, in the midst of a 30-day wellness policy violation, and uh, it was well known that uh, he and... Yeah, I know, we, we kind of uh, get, weave in and out of, uh, of, uh, of the fabe, as it were. I know, shrugging at me a little bit. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, we, we, yeah, we kind of go all over the place. What can I say? But I, um, had, I had no idea that he was one. Oh, you didn't? Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. I sort of hear things from I sort of hear things usually from other people. I, you know. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So uh, in this case, some of it is so uh, is news to you. Okay. Yeah. No, either way, it's know. a shame to see him go. It is. It, it is was nice shame. to see him uh, when he had the, a second chance and came back. So, you know, it'll, probably won't see him again for a while. So maybe we'll see him around. Oh, uh, hey, who knows? Uh, anything is certainly possible That's on right. that. Uh, but possibly looking to uh, to kind of fill up that in some other spots. Uh, WWE announcing Thursday that it has signed seven new recruits from China hmm. to develop metal contracts. Uh, I'm going to do my best on the pronunciations of these. Uh, Big Boa, Gu Guangming, Gao Lei, Zhao, or Zhao Xia, Wang Xiaolong, Yi Feng, and Cheng Yushang were all discovered earlier this year during a four-day tryout in Shanghai and will begin training at the WWE Performance Center in Orlando starting in January. Wow. Well, I hope that was right because you don't want seven Chinese wrestlers mad at you. No, definitely not. I don't even want one mad at not me. Not even one, right. <laughs> I'm trying to trying to keep uh, keep all the animosity away from me. Now, that's uh, interesting and good news. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, well, it's good that they're expanding, I mean, not just internationally but globally at this point to a country that... Uh, I mean, that hasn't seen a lot of action. There have been, I guess, a lot of uh, political barricades that have been thrown up as far as broadcast content and being able to enter in. And now, finally, some of those barriers have been broken down, and now WWE is able to go into uh, China. I believe they actually tonight are, uh, are wrestling in Shanghai. Well, no, Which, I, I, yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I just, wow. Fantastic. I just first time hearing about it. And you, you always hear about Japan, you know, some, so much. And we see what comes over from Japan. And all the talent I've seen of, comes over from that is absolutely incredible. And I, I just think the talent pool over there is, is overwhelmingly good. And, it and, I'm just, and let's just hope, you know, that the Chinese are the same way. I don't believe I know any off the top of my head I, China, I Chinese yeah. wrestlers. And I think I, maybe it was the political barricades. It's great that they're opening the doors to so expand the talent pool even further and, you know, hopefully make the rest of the world. Uh, want to step up the competition and step up the game and it's a good thing for the wrestling world and, and just in the world in general in so many ways uh, most certainly is so, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what they can do starting in uh, January when they make their way to the performance center uh, and from the anything can happen and anything can go wrong in uh, professional wrestling uh, realm uh, WWE was in uh, not too far from China uh, Manila in the Philippines a day ago and uh, an interesting video popped up from the event uh, when the big show was taking on John Cena I don't know if you had heard about this either Grey Wolf um, he attempted a second rope splash on Cena and as he was going to jump the rope snapped uh, as I said, just goes to show that anything can happen. It didn't and, uh, just come off, it snapped. Yeah, the, the, it wasn't one of the corner things. The actual it, yeah, rope in the middle has, snapped. I mean, we've seen it happen before. We've seen the rings, collab rings collapse with two big men in the middle. Uh, well, the first One of the first shows uh, they actually ran when uh, the MFPW started running, uh, all of the ropes came off. All of the ropes snapped, and they had to run one of the first shows without any ropes at all in the ring. That's, so, I, and know, if I remember right, I happen. believe uh, of all people who uh, heard about it and tweeted about it, Stone Cold Steve Austin. See, indeed, Stone Cold Steve right? Austin had heard that, about it and tweeted about it. But you never know what's going to happen. Does not see, sound good at all. <laughs> it probably isn't. <laughs> I'm good. glad I wasn't, you know, on the ropes. Well, that, I've seen ropes snap before, and it's not, oh, it's yeah, not no, fun for it, anyone. It's, it's, I've seen people get hurt, um, and it's, it's scary. To you watch, never yeah. know, well, you know, what could happen, what could go wrong. But that's also a 500. What is he? 500 pounds now, 450 pounds. He's a sure. big man. Yeah, I mean, it's not you know, the first yeah, time he's broken ropes on a, and, on a cable. So, just glad no one got hurt because it is the middle rope, and that's could have been worse. So, it all went well from what I heard. So that, that leads me to a, uh, and I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, Grey Wolf, and I uh, apologize in advance for it, but uh, what's the biggest in-ring obstacle or malfunction that you've ever personally had to deal with? Oh, this is actually an, an easy one. Oh, okay. Uh, All right, good. I, I, left, I gave you a softball there then. <laughs> Um, that's actually there was no, there was no pre-screening of questions on it's, this, it, so this was, yeah. We were, we were involved in a... Um, we were involved in a match. It was a, um, a, a wheel. They had a wheel. You spin the wheel, and whatever it lands on is the thing you have to do for your match. So we ended up getting, as me and the other person, they, you do it early in the event, and you whatever you land on, you, you get. So we had a, a doll collar match. It was a doll collar. It was a oh, leather no. strap match. It wasn't a doll collar with a chain. It was actually a leather strap between us, and we had the doll collars on. Um, so the first thing we do, it was me, it was... Uh, 
who it was uh, J.D. Bam Bam Roberts, is the one he went by the time. Now it's J.D. Browning. He uh, goes by another name. but And he has lost a lot of weight, and I'm very proud of him on his journey because he had lost so much weight and really dedicated himself. But at the time, he was about 350 pounds. Mm-hmm. So it was myself against him. And the first thing we do, we're both tugging at the the rope, the, the, the leather strap between us as hard as we can, you know, putting all our weight, you have 350 pounds of him and, you know, 19.6 stone of me, uh, leaning back on each other, and the first thing that happens is it snaps. Right so, in the beginning of the match. You know, instant, the first thing we did, we, you know, pulled at it and it snapped right there, right away. So that went terribly, terribly wrong. Um... So well, we just ended up looking at each other and just started fighting. You know, we got the rope, started just whipping each other. All you know, no holds barred at that point. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you can't really fix it. it the thing it's the latch itself broke, so you couldn't reattach it. Oh, so that, wow. that ended up happening. Well, there was a whole table of different, you know, things. I think a chair, and you know, there was a rope. I remember being a rope there, on the table, and the table was by the entrance. Well, we're going, he had, I guess, had an idea. We're fighting towards the entrance, beating each other on the outside of the ring, and he grabs the rope and brings it back with him. And his intent, I find out later, uh, for the end of the match, he wanted to try to tie my feet to the rope to pin me. And, oh, uh, to pin me. it's hard to kick out if your feet yeah. are uh, prone and tied well, together. What ended up happening is he, put the ro- he brought the rope back and put it in the corner. And much to his dismay, he went to find it later to tie my feet up. And one of the security ta- guards had taken it back to the table. So oh, this is so, wow. uh, so fortunate for me, I guess. You know, I think he ended up using the rope. He, he went back to his initial idea and used my rope to uh, feet, the, the rope, uh, the, the leather strap to tie my feet to the ropes and uh, improvise. But his idea was to take the rope and tie my feet. You know, so, so hence why he went over to the table to grab it in the first place. So that went wrong for him. So it was sort of the match where you know, <laughs> probably a smart idea on his part, though. Which it, <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Um, but that's uh, that's sort of the match where the day where everything went wrong. It was just, and there was another uh, another day. I remember um, this was going back down in uh, Delaware a few years back. We were, it was a restaurant or a bar called Bubba's. Now we were having an outside event, um, and it's at an over twenty one event because it's at a bar. Now we had a decent draw coming into the event, but it was outside, and you know what happens. You know weather not permitting sometimes. Well, it was supposed to begin. You know, I believe seven o'clock is the show time. Um, it rained torrentially. Oh, no. And, and this is after the ring was already set up. And we argued about the ball. It was going to be a decent draw, and then, you know, people just started leaving and leaving and leaving. They wanted to postpone and keep postponing. Well, it ended up happening about 9 o'clock or so. It's two hours after the original bell time uh, was supposed to happen. But I've never seen anything like it. To, to this day, I have never seen anything like it. Every time when somebody take a body slam in the ring or a hip toss or anything, a suplex, you'd see big splashes of water coming off coming off the canvas. Because oh, it was no. Because it, it just absorbed like, that much water in the two hours. Absorbing that much water. <clears throat> but the sound system w- went bad that night, uh, obviously, because of the weather. And, and the ring was bad. And then we ended up wrestling in front of about 15 people. And by that time, they were all drunk. Because they, you know, this was later in the evening. They, they had already stayed in been drinking for several They waited hours. it out and uh, decided, decided to have a few to, libations yeah, in the I mean, process. But uh, needless to say, the, the, it was just a night where everything was just destined to go wrong. There was other bad things. I don't, I don't say bad things, just mishaps that happened later in the night. My match, you know, things happened during my match that went, you know, screwy. And, and, and other people's matches just... Uh, but it's the one one time I... Uh, I, 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 remember, I remember watching from behind the, the, the curtain... Uh, one of my friends at the time is, you know, the thriller Andy Bivens, and he would do a da- gimmick where he danced like Michael Jackson. Uh, he okay. Was wrestling someone else. Uh, um, it was um, Romeo Athens, who used to wrestle down in Delaware at the time, and he wrestled under a mask, and he also danced. So the entire match, the dancing, and I'll never forget what happened that night. Uh, it's one of the most hilarious finishes I've ever seen to a match in my life. Somehow, because it's an over-21 event, somehow... My friend Andy, and he had his pants around his ankles with his arse, you know, just uh, bare around the ring, and he's there holding. <laughs> and I don't know how it happened, but he ended up on his hands and knees. And Scotty Astro goes to the second rope, puts his fingers to get two fingers on his hands together oh, like no. a gun, and dives, plunging both of his fingers into Andy Bivens' you know, rear end, and then. 
I remember the expression on his face. I've never seen anyone's eyes pop out of the head so far. But he ended up getting a three count afterwards, and I think he ended up pulling his pants back up. You know, somewhere after there. I'm gonna but check for this on YouTube. This is. I don't know if it is on YouTube. <laughs> I'm gonna look. What for the match? That's in front of 15 people. <laughs> but it was know. sort of for him. That was the night everything went wrong as well because I, the pants ended up coming down. I, I, I was gonna say I'm surprised that wasn't an instant submission. Yeah. I think he did. I think that's why he got the <laughs> three count. But that was sort of the night. Reminds me when Tito Santana tried to rip my pants off. <laughs> Yeah, remember that? that was he didn't try. He effectively did rip off, but luckily he didn't rip off more. I was hanging on the dear life for my trying underpants. to rip off more. <laughs> he saw only in professional wrestling. And of course, I say that. Uh, now I'll save that story for another day. <laughs> I've already caused enough trouble. I think somewhere in the back, Teddy Faw is uh, uh, dropping a few droplets of sweat at some of these stories <laughs> here. Thanks again. <laughs> oh, he hasn't pounded on the the window for me to hit the dump button yet, so we're uh, so we're good, I suppose. <laughs> I haven't been. <laughs> Who knows? Seats haven't gone off. <laughs> no, instead he's he's you know he's 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 cracking up instead. So the desired effect is uh, is certainly there. All right, let's. Um, I was gonna say we'll we'll take care of our second uh, second and final timeout. I'll get to Ed from Northeast Philly, who's been hanging on so patiently. I'll get him up on the uh, the other side of the break, and. Um, yeah, then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about the backlash pay per view coming up tomorrow. Um, what I'll do, uh, I'll just I'll put Lucas's and my predictions up on the Facebook fan page, the WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly Facebook fan page. Just since things are uh, a little a, a little askew with the uh, the the in studio guests, and uh, well, we plus could... I'm kind of curious. With, I was going to say I don't know if, uh, with the stories that have been told, I'm kind of afraid to see how much further the uh, the line can be drawn here. <laughs> Oh, they're they're shrugging and looking like, well, let's. It, if he asks for it, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll we just, certainly we apply. We just didn't want you to be lonely. Uh, <laughs> that that is certainly appreciated. Uh, but before we uh, before we head on over to that, gotta tell you uh, today is a bittersweet day at the Broken Goblet Brewery, fifteen hundred Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Today is the last day of beloved bartender Kate. So stop on by and wish her the best in her future endeavors. And also there are limited quantities remaining of the two most recent bottle releases, Crystal Hef and Escorted from the Building. The respective 8% Hefeweizen and 9% Imperial Red Ale. I was going to say, as soon as I said red ale, Grey Wolf uh, smiled a little bit. I, I may have to I mean, bring up... If you said meat, I'd be looking around a little more. But. Um, well, you say that. They do have, uh, they, they do serve mead from the Colony Meadery out of Allentown, PA. How long until uh, until it breaks over? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, they open at 2 o'clock today, so ah, that, that'll give us time to... Uh, teasing me. <laughs> they're open 2 till midnight today, so you have... Uh, Time to uh, to plan on that. And we're just also six weeks away from Hoppy Halloween 3, a beer fest that celebrates the best libations available in Bucks County and the surrounding areas. Uh, buy online between now and this Wednesday and save $5 off the ticket price to admission. Uh, it's Saturday, October 22nd from 5 until 9 p.m. That's a blast. I went last year. Yeah, and this time there'll be more breweries, more music, more vendors, more surprises. More and more last year? And more porta-potties. Wow. I can't wait. Oh, good, good. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was the, I was going to say, the uh, quick aside on that was that uh, there were so many people and uh, they hadn't quite... Uh, picked enough portable uh, commodes to suit the number of people and uh, the lines I've, were I've much one. longer so than it preferred was it, it was it, it was handled as best as could be done given the situation but um one of the owners mike was uh rather embarrassed about it so he has gone out of his way to uh, uh i'm afraid to see how many he has ordered for this one so that alone should be interesting well mike i can tell you i, I no need to be embarrassed it was a great event it was worth a few minutes waiting the line <laughs> It most certainly was. So far, uh, 25 breweries and other libation areas have already been announced, uh, including to name a few, Neshaminy Creek, Yards, Triumph, Evil Genius, and Weyerbacher. And for those who aren't necessarily a beer drinker, uh, the Colony Meadery will be uh, on hand, as well as Commonwealth Cider. They'll be providing their uh, alternate wares as well. Just a few examples of why it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Coming back, we'll uh, get to Ed from Northeast Philly and uh, see what other debauchery we can get into here alongside the Last Warrior Grey Wolf, the Indy Roundup champion, and uh, the general manager of Atlantic Pro Wrestling, Sir Style, as well as... Uh, Little style. Uh, little style and Samoan style. That's right. They're, uh, 
He's he's afraid yes. to, the microphone will not bite you. You do realize this, right? He, he's moving ever so, so with such trepidation, like it's going to attack him or something. It's 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 well, it, no, it's it's S Samoan style. Okay, yeah, Isaac is back here playing his video game. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know, I know you're fired up. Well, I'll tell you what, what's the match you're most looking forward to? Well, you know, we'll, we'll get into that on the other side. We got Yeah, I was gonna say we, we're we're up against a uh, timeout here, so we'll get that out of the way. Then the rest of the hour will be ours here, and we'll uh, we'll talk with Little Style as well as Sir Style and Gray Wolf and. Uh, Room for you as well on the phones. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. All right, Westbrook here to tell you about my good friends over at Golden Nugget Jewelers. Just because I used to leave it all in the field doesn't mean you have to leave all your money at the register to get her that special engagement ring. Head on over to Golden Nugget Showroom on the corner of 8th and Chestnut to get treated like a Hall of Famer. They've got the best selection of loose diamonds, the best prices, and lifetime guarantees. But what really sets Golden Nugget apart is a family-owned, friendly atmosphere. Golden Nugget Jewelers, it's where Philly gets engaged. Fire Financial Services can help you experience financial security through informed decision-making. The advisors at Fire help businesses and individuals with their retirement, estate planning needs, and employee benefits. Buyer, business, individual, retirement, estate. Call 1-800-838-BIRE or 610 825 4066 to talk to a buyer representative so you can sleep well at night. Securities offered through Parkland Securities LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, branch office 4066, Butler Pike, Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania, 19462. Buyer Financial Services is not affiliated with Parkland Securities LLC. Being there matters, and your Navy protects and defends America on the world's oceans. Around the globe, around the clock, Navy ships, submarines, aircraft, and most importantly, tens of thousands of America's finest young men and women are ready to defend America. When piracy threatens global commerce, when disaster strikes, or when called upon by the Commander-in-Chief, your Navy is there. When it comes to protecting and defending America, being there matters, and America's Navy is already there. I'm Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker, asking you to join me and former Philly slugger Greg the Bull Luzinski for the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session presented by Gage Fiore. Attorneys at FightForYou.com every Monday, 6 to 7 p.m. We'll talk Phillies baseball with a different guest each week. Go to WBCB1490.com to check show locations and guest information each week. The Independence Blue Cross Bull Session presented by Gage Fiore. Attorneys at FightForYou.com every Monday at 6 p.m. on 1490 WBCB and 610 Sports. You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, September 10. On this date in 1998, WCW Thunder aired live from Lexington, Kentucky. In the main event, Kevin Nash defeated Stevie Ray by disqualification. On this date in 2001, WWF Monday Night Raw aired live from San Antonio, Texas. In the main event, The Rock defeated Stephanie McMahon and Test in a handicap tag team match. On this date in 2007, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Green Bay, Wisconsin. In the main event, The Great Khali pinned Jeff Hardy. On this date in 2012, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. In the main event, Cody Rhodes pinned Rey Mysterio. This has been Today in Wrestling History, September 10. Hi, this is Jim Cornette, and you're listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry on 1490 WBCB. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry, it looks like flying solo for the moment, uh, or at least for this week, as, uh, well, we'll hear from that, uh, that punk Lucas at some point, since I guess he didn't hear to call in necessarily. But uh, one person who is called, uh, calling in and has been very patient with us here is Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. 
feel the heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it almost feels like uh, uh, SummerSlam 89 in that regard. Feel the heat. <laughs> <laughs> SummerSlam's over, but the heat continues. <laughs> Yeah, most certainly. Uh, I was going to say, I get heat on a weekly basis, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> anyway, what's uh, what, what's going on in the local scene here? Uh, CM Punk is on UFC tonight, starting at 615. Uh, I was going to say, that's, that's, I was gonna say, that's beyond local, but yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be tuning into that tonight, yeah, the, uh, the CM Punk and Mickey Gall uh, uh, UFC fight. It's also on oh. FS1 on the cable network. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I was going to say, it's coming on pretty late. Uh, uh, Sir Style was saying it was past your bedtime. For sure, past my bedtime, but I just might have to stay up and watch this one. Yeah, uh, the, the interesting thing on it is Punk is the largest underdog of all of the fighters on the main card, uh, as far as, again, for those who put a few shekels on these things. Uh, he is a plus 350 as compared to Mickey Gall's minus 450. So I have mixed feelings. I respect the guy, but I, I hope he gets it handed to him. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. That's how I feel. Uh, I don't know. Personal thoughts aside, I have a hunch that Gall's going to take it, but um, I was going to say, getting a text in from uh, from Lucas, he he's going the other way. He's going with his boy, Punk, and that shouldn't surprise me even the slightest. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, uh, what what else have you got, Ed? Uh, CCW, WSU, double-headed this afternoon. Oh, that's the double-headed this afternoon. Okay, the CCW and WSU. Okay, Still and that's 4 p.m. and that's in is Voorhees. that? Oh, it's in Voorhees. Okay. Uh, at the skate zone. Ah, yes, the Flyers skate zone. I may just go there at this point just to get out of this heat, just to kind of <laughs> sit in the uh, in the ice rink there and just uh, soak up a little bit of that coolness. Dean Ambrose is at a quick wireless this Tuesday on uh, Broad Street. Oh, yes, leading up to uh, SmackDown in Philadelphia this uh, this coming Tuesday. Uh, Dean Ambrose appearing at the uh, Cricket Wireless on Broad Street in Philadelphia. Yeah, 2900 North Broad. Okay, should be interesting. I don't know if I'll be able to uh, to get out of one. work for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, 11 to 1. one. I, won't, I won't be able to get out of work for that, but somebody <laughs> wants to go on their lunch break and... Uh, and go and check uh, check out Dean Ambrose. I know he's got a lot of uh, Philadelphia ties here uh, with uh, some of his past work prior to WWE. Uh, Raw in Baltimore the night before. Uh, that's right. This coming Monday, yeah, Raw is going to be in Baltimore as well. So yeah, it's it's good when yeah, uh, when they up, make their way through the area. Yeah, I cleared up that mess some two weeks ago when I made that mistake. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> that that certainly is a rough one to say the least. <laughs> and um, September seventeenth is House of Hardcore Icons of Wrestling at yeah. the arena. And that that's right. One week from tonight, and then the uh, the Collector Fest earlier in the day, and then uh, the House of Hardcore at the uh, at the arena next Saturday night should be a lot of fun as well. I'll have to see what. I have to see what I'm doing that day. I'm not. Uh, I may have to make my way over there or uh, see what I can do. See if I can get a press pass to get in there. Fairless Hill Show. Does George have tickets to that? Uh, does George have tickets to uh, the show on the fifteenth? George is not currently. Um, they can be my all the phone numbers you can get them from are on the Atlantic Pro Wrestling Facebook oh. site. They can currently be purchased uh, at the Trenton Road 7-Eleven at the venue at the Fraternal Order of Eagles. And from myself personally, my phone number is two one five three five nine five eight zero zero. It's two one five three five nine fifty eight hundred. If you're in Jersey, I can call. I can give you a Jersey phone number to pick them up. Also. Oh, there you go. All right, all right thanks. <laughs> I'll be calling you in about a week. <laughs> He'll be calling you in about a week. <laughs> Sounds great. Can't wait to talk to you. All right. There you go, Thanks. Ed. No problem. Thank you. And, and uh, more, one, more of an Ashley Cup next week. Oh, wait, what was that next week? The uh, the phone kind of kicked out. Oh, more, on, more on that next week. Okay. Yes. That sounds I like don't a plan. I have much information on that yet. All righty. Sounds like a plan. Uh, thank you, you so much. Arena? 
Am I going to? Uh, I will not be broadcasting from the arena at this uh, for next week's go. We'll be back here in studio because. We've been on the road so much between the, the MFPW remotes and the, the Broken Goblet remote and a couple of other things. It's nice to kind of be here in studio and have a chat with the lovelies like yourself over the phone. So uh, I try to spread it out a little bit more, although I think coming up in a few weeks we might, uh, we might be on the road to uh, help promote this event. Um, uh, but more on that as, uh, as the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Yeah, we'll we'll have a, a more of an update on that next week to uh, to say the least. As I'm getting a nod here from uh, Sir Style on that, I, I have to paint a picture with the words. That's what I do here on the radio. <laughs> stay cool. <laughs> uh, I will certainly do my best to stay cool. Thank you so much, Ed, for the call. Appreciate the look at the local scene as always. Here in studio, we've got uh, Sir Style, the general manager of. Atlantic Pro Wrestling coming to the Fraternal Order of Eagles on Saturday, October 15th. That's at uh, 920 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. And we also have the Indy Roundup champion, the Last Warrior Grey Wolf. A, uh, a, not to use the mean gene line, but a close personal friend of mine. Oh, as uh, <laughs> A roof indeed. And also uh, a couple of the little ones back here. We've got uh, Little Style and uh, Samoan Style, who is... Uh, Oh, he's, he actually uh, slightly... Oh, no, he's back at the video game. <laughs> oh. That better be a wrestling video game. <laughs> well, it's not, but he beat up wrestlers. Oh, he, oh, he beat oh, up wrestlers? Fabulous, no, fabulous. That, no, we'll talk not, about that on the way home. That's, oh, boy. That's not, good, that's not that great of a subject for what we're talking about right now. <laughs> you tell him, little stop. Well, one other, uh, uh, I guess, local scene uh, tidbit to look at that Ed didn't get to is that we're two weeks away from another huge event at the MFPW Arena, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. The Monster Abyss returning against a yet-to-be-named opponent. Also making his debut at the MFPW, former mixed martial arts and NXT star Josh Woods. Oh, I didn't know Josh was coming up there. Yeah, that's... that's uh, the first news to me. It's good to hear. It's going to be good to see him again. Uh, he'll be challenging uh, Leon St. Giovanni for the Supersonic Championship. Yeah, wow, that indeed. Be yeah. Match. It be a really <laughs> good match. You know, I've, I've seen Leon St. Giovanni uh, over the past few years just progress, um, and he's become a very good, close uh, personal friend of mine. And the things he can do in the ring are absolutely astounding. And if you haven't seen this man work, um, go out of your way to buy a ticket to an event. Um, so you can see him, um, you know, in person. Some of the things he can do. He's just he's an incredible, incredible wrestler, and I'm really hoping, personally, that he gets signed somewhere within the next few years because I think he's worked very hard, and I think he deserves it. And I think you know you've seen his work. Oh, but first without time question. And he's on the, the kid is unbelievable. He's really unbelievable. Some of the things he can do in the ring. And Josh Woods, well, former NXT star. You know that's all. You know. <laughs> all yeah, you the, the, the accolades speak for themselves, most certainly. <laughs> Uh, you'll also see the Beast Cartel, the Money and the Miles, paid in full, Cody Vance and more. It all goes down two weeks from tonight at the MFPW presented by the world-famous Monster Factory, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. The doors open at 6, the action starts at 7, and don't forget to check out the MFPW and all things Monster Factory on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, plus at monsterfactory.org. Also check out past matches, bios, bloopers, and more at the mfnetwork.com, and coming soon to the MF Network, Monday Night Monsters. Yes, yeah, that's something to look forward to. I've seen some of the footage that he's been putting out of that he's been filming, and it's in the production's incredible, the, the theatrics are incredible, and I think everyone who tunes in and watches that's going to be in for a real treat. I'm excited myself. Yeah, I, I had a chance to be a, a part of some of that filming, and uh, I can only imagine as the play-by-play -play voice of the MFPW uh, what there will be in store as far as uh, production, uh, audio, and video. As I have a hunch, there may be a few things I'll have to, uh, a few extracurricular recordings that I may have to provide, and some of that may be uh, done right here at WBCB. Certainly looking forward to that. So we've got a couple of minutes left. And time for a notable segment here on the show, uh, which if Lucas were here, he'd uh, drop the, uh, the, the line, birthdays. That's right. Luke, Lucas isn't here? Uh, yeah, I know. He's <laughs> just, no, Ted Efall is, however, but uh, he's coming up with the Country Road Show uh, here on WBCB. But a few birthdays that have occurred in uh, professional wrestling. On this date in 1949, Donald Morocco was born. The two-time WWF Intercontinental Champion oh. and 2004 WWE Hall of Famer turned 67 today. Fantastic. Happy birthday, Don. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, The Rock. <laughs> yeah, Don The Rock Morocco. Yeah, the original Rock. That's right. 
Uh, and this date in 1951, Stephen Paul Kern was born. The wrestler and trainer known as one half of the Fabulous Ones tag team, as well as in the WWF as Skinner, and uh, yes. the second doink from WrestleMania 9, personal memory of mine. Uh, and current NXT trainer turned 65 today. Also on this date in 1976, Matt Morgan was born. The former two-time TNA Tag Team Champion turns 40 today. And on this date in 1980, William Theodore Muckler was born. The former three-time WWE Tag Team Champion known as Trevor Murdoch hmm. turns 36 today. And as a Brucey bonus, uh, yeah, of course, you know, from the uh, I had to throw the uh, the Bruce Forsyth Brucey bonus in there. Something just outside of the world of wrestling. On this date in 1929, Arnold Daniel Palmer was born, the professional golfing legend who was so popular that a drink and a damn fine one at that has been named after him. Arnold Palmer turns 87 today. Wow. Happy we'll birthday to that. Birthday. So I want to thank uh, well everybody who came in, everybody for listening. Uh, Gray Wolf, good to see you again. Oh, it's uh, good to see you for Looking all. forward to, uh, to to seeing you in action, uh, defending this belt, and uh, it's going to be action, all right. Collecting skulls as you tend to do. Yeah. Balls count anywhere, and he says he's got a surprise. Huh? That, that, that ought to be interesting. Uh, Sir <laughs> Style, nice uh, good to see you as well from Atlantic Pro Wrestling, as uh, well as Little Style, and uh, thank you so the much. not necessarily as interactive Samoan Style in the back there. Uh, and until next week when we're back here in studio, play us out, Nutsy. One o'clock in Old Wales. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WBC.